Hi everybody, um, thanks Julia. My name is Scott McQuitter, I'm at the University of Technology Sydney and I'd just like to talk to you about some of the work we've been doing over the past five to six months. Um, we've had a, an interest in, in disambiguation of research data that has stemmed a little bit from uh, an experience we had with our name. Uh, we had a comma in our name and that meant that essentially quite a lot of our data was being delimited in the major aggregators and so we changed our name. So we take that uh, disambiguation problem fairly seriously. We also have a high proportion of staff who have uh, a common given initial and surname combination. And you can see on the right hand side of the screen here, this is the, uh, the top publishing authors at, at UTS um, and there's some fairly common combinations there. We also, uh, being a technology university, have quite high coverage rates in uh, the ORCID integrated sources, so in Crossref and in Scopus. And we work with two research management systems that are downstream from our, our key students and staff systems. So we do experience some persistent duplicate problems that we think ORCID can help with. Um, and both of the systems that we use have some degree of, of integration with ORCID, so we're, we're kind of in a good position to, to do something quickly. So we had a bit of a think when we heard that the consortium was in the offing and we came up with a, a few projects uh, that we'd like to undertake. One was aimed at getting us to 500 users inside Symplectic, one of our uh, core systems. Um, the next to 1,000, 2,000 and then eventually at some time in the, in the distant future to have the research effort at UTS uh, well described by, by ORCIDs. So I'll be talking mostly about this fairly small project that we ran late last year. And that uh, kicked off October 1 when we took out our institutional subscription ahead of the consortium subscription. Um, we did that because we, we weren't quite sure how long the consortium uh, would take to, to get over the line and thank you to everybody involved. It was a, a relatively painless exercise from our perspective. Um, one of the things we, we wanted was for the ORCIDs to be used inside one of our systems. So it was kind of important that they, people just didn't go off and get an ORCID but it was actually used in anger somewhere. Um, as a byproduct of the project, we wanted the academic community to broadly understand what ORCID was um, and we also wanted the administrative community to understand what the opportunities were for, for ORCID. Um, because of the time period that we were running it over, uh, we decided that we wouldn't run it as an especially collaborative project, that it would be largely driven by the research division. We um, just really concentrate on this single system and that's because it was going to run over the break. So what worked well, um, certainly signing up the senior executive early, so the, the, the um, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research, uh, many of the ADRs, uh, the deans, um, and, and giving them some merchandise seemed to be pretty very effective in, in them becoming strong advocates for, for this small change program that we were undertaking. We also got a list of uh, ORCIDs from ORCIDs of people who had UTS as an employer or in their education background and we directly emailed them with a, a simple one pager of how to establish the link. Um, we have a message of the month so we, we uh, took the January message of the month uh, which in, basically involves uh, 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 an email footer that's standard across all research division emails. Uh, we used the large screens in every building, put out general university notices, a DVCR email, and the weekly funding opportunities newsletter for, for every week in that month had a standard description of what the benefits were and uh, how to get to a single one pager about establishing an ORCID and linking it into the product. Uh, we approached the ARC and NHMRC applicant lists through direct emails. We changed the login screen to Symplectic to offer training and to indicate a kind of running total of where we're up to. Um, and we did some targeted workshops in some areas of the university that we thought would benefit directly. And I have to say that one of the things that was uh, kind of instrumental was that the publishers started mandating during the lifetime of the project. 
So this is the uh, adoption at UTS, and you can see this is largely the period for the project. Um, so you can see it's a nice steady uh, adoption over the period, and the period since has got a gen more gentle gradient. We're not really marketing at all. Um, and you can see as to who has gotten an orchid. Um, if you ignore the fairly small divisions at the end here, it's who you might expect, so science and health, the people that might gain the most benefit. Um, uh, arts and social science is well represented. They were running a profile project that we piggybacked. Um, engineering and IT were very, had very low penetration rates for the majority of the project, and then when IEEE announced its mandate, they, they jumped up. Uh, and law and DAB, where you'd suspect that, that marketing this type of change might be more difficult, has proved to be the case. And we've got a bit more work to do with the Graduate School of Health here at UTS. This is just a, a picture of the login screen to Symplectic. Um, so indicate, indicating that the, the integration had been done, um, what the key benefit was, and, and where we're up to with uh, the assistance of training and uh, uh, setting up a uh, registering an interest. So the things that didn't run so well was that during the lifetime of the project, we didn't really have remote access set up to this key product very well, especially for Mac users, so it's now been fixed. Uh, we also didn't have a standard place in the, uh, the academic profile template, external profile template during the lifetime of that project, and that would have been helpful. So the next project that we've just been funded is to assess which other systems um, will use ORCID um, to look at the integration pathways for those systems, and we'll certainly be getting some advice from Melroy. Uh, familiarising our central IT services with, with uh, ORCID and maybe the API, but I don't think that will be especially required given our approach. Um, certainly developing a much more coherent approach and uh, across all the support divisions within the university <coughs> and beginning that, that much longer process of integrating ORCID into the, the actual processes of the university around recruitment and induction. And that is, I think, all.